favour, Mr. Hardcastle, your very particular, is that a creature in the whole countryside but ourselves that does not take a trip to London town now and then to rub off the rust a little? Aye, and bring back vanity and affectation to last them the whole year. Yeah, I wonder why London cannot keep its own fools at home. In my time, the follies of the town crept slowly among us. Now, huh, they travel faster than a stagecoach. Ah, uh, your times were fine times indeed. You've been telling us of them for many a long year. Hmm? Here we live in an old, rumbling mansion that looks for all the world like an inn. Except that we never see company. And all our entertainment, your old stories of Prince Eugene and the Duke of Marlborough. Uh. I hate such old-fashioned trumpery. And I love it. I love everything that's old. Old friends, old times, old manners, old books, old wine. And I believe, Dorothy, your own, I have been pretty fond of an old wife. Oh, Mr. Hardcastle, you're forever at your Dorothy's and your old wives. I'm not as old as you'd make me. Add 20 to 20 and make money of that. Well, let's see. 20 added to 20 makes 57. <laughs> It's false, Mr. Hardcastle. I was but 30, 20, when I was brought to bed of Tony that I had by Mr. Lumpkin, my first husband, and Tony hasn't come of age. He's not 21 yet. N nor ever will be, I dare answer for him. <laughs> Aye, you have taught him finely. <laughs> no matter. Tony Lumpkin has a good fortune. My son is not to live by his learning. I don't think a boy wants much learning to spend 1500 a year. <laughs> learning for him? <laughs> He's a mere composition of tricks and mischief. Humour, my dear. Come, Mr. Hardcastle, you must allow the boy a little humour. I'd sooner allow him a horse pond. <laughs> if burning the footman's shoes, frightening the maids and worrying the kittens be humour, he has it. He was, but yesterday he fastened me wig to the back of me chair. And when I went to make a bow, I popped me bald head in Mrs. Frizzle's face. <laughs> and am I to blame? The poor boy was always too sickly to do any good. <laughs> a school would be his death. When he comes to be a little stronger, who knows what a year or two's Latin may do for him. Latin for him? A cat and a fiddle? No, no, no. The alehouse and the stable are the only schools he'll ever go to. Well, we must not snub the poor boy now, for I believe we shan't have him long among us. <laughs> Anybody that looks in his face may see he's consumptive. Ah, if growing too fat be one of the symptoms. <laughs> He coughs sometimes. Yes, when his liquor goes down the wrong way. <laughs> I'm actually worried about his lungs. And truly so am I, for sometimes he whoops like a speaking trumpet. Oh, 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 yeah. There he goes, a very consumptive figure, truly. <laughs> Tony, where are you going, my charmer? Won't you give Step Papa and I a little of your company, lovey? Oh, I'm in haste, Mother. I cannot stay. Oh, you shan't venture out this raw day, my dear. You look most shockingly. I can't stay, I tell you. The Three Pigeons expects me down every moment. There's some fun going for me. Aye, aye, the alehouse, the old place. I thought so. <laughs> A low, paltry set of fellows there. Pray, my dear, disappoint them for once at least. Eh? As for disappointing them, I should not so much mind, but I can't abide to disappoint myself. You shan't go. Come here. Oh, will I tell you? Get off. Well, I say you shan't. We'll see which is stronger, you or I. Come on, mother. <laughs>